Have you ever wondered how to achieve financial freedom? It's a question that's probably crossed your mind at some point. Now, when we say financial freedom, we're not talking about swimming in pools of gold coins or buying a fleet of luxury cars. No, financial freedom is a much more attainable and sustainable goal. Financial freedom is about having enough, enough to meet your needs, enough to cover unexpected expenses, enough to allow you to live your life without constantly worrying about every penny. It's about being able to sleep soundly at night, knowing you're not drowning in debt. Achieving financial freedom doesn't mean you have to become a millionaire. It's about managing what you have wisely, so you can live comfortably and securely. In this video, we're going to provide a roadmap to help you reach that goal with practical, achievable steps. So, are you ready to embark on your journey to financial freedom? Let's explore the steps together. The first step to financial freedom is understanding your debt. Now, it's not necessarily the most pleasant step, but it's undeniably crucial. It's like trying to navigate a ship without a compass. You won't get very far if you don't know where you're starting from. Debt can come in many shapes and sizes. You may have credit card balances sitting on the back burner, student loans that seem to just keep growing, or even a mortgage that feels like a mountain. It's all debt, and it all needs to be accounted for. The trick is to take each piece of the puzzle and put it together to see the bigger picture. Start by listing out each debt you owe, no matter how big or small. This means everything from that pesky credit card balance to the more substantial items like your mortgage or student loans. Once you have everything laid out, it's time to do some arithmetic. Add up each debt to get your total debt. This number may feel daunting, and that's okay. It's not meant to scare you, but to give you a clear, unfiltered view of your financial situation. Remember, this is your starting point, not your end point. It's where you are now, not where you'll be forever. So take a deep breath, it's time to face the numbers head on. Once you have a clear picture of your debt, you can start planning how to tackle it. Now that you understand your debt, the next step is creating a budget. Crafting a budget might feel like a daunting task, but it's essentially a financial blueprint that helps you manage your finances effectively. It's your money, and a budget allows you to tell it where to go, rather than wondering where it went. To begin with, we need to understand our expenses. Generally, expenses can be divided into three main categories, needs, wants, and savings. Needs are what you can't live without. These include basics like rent or mortgage payments, groceries, utilities, healthcare, and transportation. Wants, on the other hand, are things you'd like to have but don't necessarily need for survival. These could be things like a new pair of shoes, a vacation, or a night out at a fancy restaurant. Now, savings might seem like an odd category to include in expenses, but it's crucial to view savings as a non-negotiable expense. This means you set aside a portion of your income for savings every month, just like you would for rent or groceries. This could go towards an emergency fund, retirement, or even a down payment for a house. So, how do you decide how much to allocate to each category? A popular rule is the 50-30-20 rule. 50% 50 of your income goes to needs, 30% to wants, and 20% to savings. But remember, these are not hard and fast rules. You have to adjust these numbers based on your personal circumstances. The most important part of budgeting is consistency. It's not enough to just create a budget. You need to stick to it. This might mean making sacrifices and cutting back on wants. But remember, every time you choose not to spend on a want today, you're choosing to have more financial freedom tomorrow. Creating and sticking to a budget might seem challenging at first, but with time, it becomes easier. It gives you control over your money and helps you make informed decisions about your spending. A budget is your financial roadmap guiding you towards your goal of financial freedom. With your budget in place, it's time to start paying off your debt. When it comes to clearing debt, there isn't a one-size-fits-all solution. The best strategy will depend on your individual circumstances, your personality, and your financial goals. Two popular methods are the snowball method and the avalanche method, each with its own unique approach. The snowball method is all about momentum. It's perfect for those who are motivated by quick wins. Here's how it works. You start by focusing on your smallest debt first, regardless of interest rates. While making minimum payments on all other debts, you put as much money as you can into paying off this smallest debt. Once it's paid off, you move on to the next smallest debt and so on, like a snowball rolling downhill. Your confidence and your commitment to becoming debt-free 
grow larger and larger. On the other hand, the avalanche method is more about numbers and logic. It's suited for those who want to save the most money in the long run. In this approach, you start by tackling the debt with the highest interest rate first, while making minimum payments on all other debts. Once that's paid off, you move on to the debt with the next highest interest rate. This method might take longer to see progress, but it saves you more money over time because you're reducing the amount of interest you pay. So how do you choose between these two methods? It all comes down to what motivates you. If you're driven by quick wins and the feeling of accomplishment, the snowball method might be your best bet. If you're more motivated by logic and long-term savings, the avalanche method could be the way to go. Remember, the most important thing is to choose a method and stick to it. Consistency is key when it comes to paying off debt. It won't happen overnight, but with persistence and a solid strategy, you'll start to see progress. Paying off debt might seem like a daunting task, but with the right strategy, it's entirely doable. The final step towards financial freedom is building an emergency fund. This is your financial safety net, ready to catch you when life throws those unexpected curveballs. Job loss, unexpected medical bills, or even a sudden home repair can be stressful if you're not prepared. An emergency fund eases that stress, providing a buffer between you and those unpredictable expenses. So how much should you save? The answer varies for everyone, but a common recommendation is enough to cover three to six months worth of living expenses. It's a lofty goal, but don't let that intimidate you. Start small, save consistently, and soon enough you'll reach it. Here's a tip. Create a separate savings account specifically for your emergency fund. This way it's out of sight, out of mind, and less likely to be spent on non-emergencies. Having an emergency fund is like having insurance against financial disasters. It's the last piece of the puzzle in your journey to financial freedom. So there you have it, a roadmap to achieving financial freedom. It all starts with understanding your debt, knowing exactly what you owe and to whom. The next step is creating a budget, a plan for your money, which will help you regain control of your finances. Then comes the process of paying off your debt, a task that requires discipline and patience. And finally, building an emergency fund, your safety net in times of crisis. Remember, the journey to financial freedom is a marathon, not a sprint. Start today and you'll be well on your way to a debt-free life.